So how should one look at January 22, 2024, a civilizational moment or a moment for political Hindutva to express itself? Joining me now is Seshadri Chari, senior RSS leader, former editor of The Organizer. He's been associated with the Ram Janmabhoomi movement since the 1980s. Appreciate your joining us, Mr. Chari. I want to quote what the Prime Minister said in Ayodhya today. A thousand years from today, people will talk about this date, this moment, and how great is Lord Ram's grace that we are living in this moment, witnessing it to happen. He seems to suggest this is a civilizational moment. Do you agree with that? Do you believe it's civilization or is it political power? Yeah, I think what the Prime Minister has said is absolutely right. It is a civilizational moment, Rajdeep. And he is very right in alluding this. If you look at the civilizational happenings in different countries of the world, such things have happened repeatedly. Therefore, he is alluding to that. You remember one thing. In 1950, after the uh, Swamnath Temple was reconstructed, uh, the President of India, Babu Rajinder Prasad, went and attended the uh, Pran Pratishta ceremony. And you know, one of the sentences that he made at that time during his speech was, Hamne ek hajar varshon ka kalank mita diya. What does it mean by ek hajar varshon ka kalank? You know, a great burden on the, on the civilization was removed. That is what he was alluding to. There is a continuity in civilization. And these are all not just buildings. The, 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 the Ayodhya temple or what was there, the structure, it is not just brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. It is a representative of our civilizational ethos. Therefore, it was very important for us to rein, regain that monument. Mm -hmm. It was not just merely a monument. It is a center of faith, what we call Shraddha Kendra. It is a center of faith. Therefore, we are regaining a center of faith. That was what he was alluding to. You know, it's, so interest, it's interesting you're saying that uh, and, and referring to uh, uh, Rajendra Prasadji and the Somnath Temple because you will recall that uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, the then Prime Minister, refused to attend because he believed that uh, the political executive should stay away from promoting any one religion. Now you've got the Prime Minister virtually playing the role, some would say, of the head priest during these ceremonies, which is what has led some to believe that this is not just a civilizational moment, as you're calling it, but is actually also a demonstration of political power or just how religion and politics have now uh, completely, the lines have got blurred. No, it is not just the Prime Minister. He did not play the role of a priest for that matter. Mm -hmm. He performed the puja. And when he performed the puja, he was told that you have to undergo certain sort of some rituals, ritu call it re re traditional rituals or whatever it is. He performed all that. For 11 days, he did it, whatever it is. And he, he even, uh, he could uh, learn the mantras and all by heart. If you see the uh, clippings, he could recite after the Panditji, whatever he was saying, he could recite everything along with the Panditji. That, that's a great thing in learning all these things in 11 days. That's a different story, but altogether. But remember one thing, he is not just the Prime Minister of BJP. He is the Prime Minister of the country. He represents the people of this country. He represents Hindus. He represents the civilization. He represents India mm -hmm. politically. Mm -hmm. And it is the duty of the politician. And mind you, Babu Rajendra Prasad was also a politician. He was part and parcel of the freedom movement. He was the president of India. Therefore, it does not say that president or prime minister at that level should not attend such programs, number one. Number two, as, a, as the prime minister, as Narendra Modi is also an individual. He is a Swayam Sevak of the RSS. He is a Hindu. He is a, he is a believing Hindu. He is a performing Hindu. Mm -hmm. And he follows all the rituals. Therefore, it is his duty that he represent the people of this country. So he was not just merely representing the government of India. It was not government of India. In fact, the government of India is not spending for Ram Janma Bhumi. The people have spent for this. The trust is spending. The money has been collected by the trust. Yes, sir, I, take, I, no, I take your, no, I take Therefore, your point. Not, not the prime minister who did it. It is Narendra Damodar Das Modi who did it. And remember one thing. Yes. This will go down in history as... What Modi did was not that he built this temple all by himself, but there was a team. Mm -hmm. Now, remember one thing. Just go back to history. We, we always say that the uh, Brihadishwar temple was built by Raja Raja Chola. 
Now, was it Rajaraja Chola who really chiseled the whole building? No, there were number of people, but it was Rajaraja Chola who restored the civilized national ethos of that time. And the temple stands as a monument for India's civilizational ethos even today. And it will be there for the next thousands of years. No, but does he represent uh, all the people of the country across all faiths? Will the temple be seen in that sense of actually bringing people together? Or is it in a way a symbol of Hindu supremacy, that Hindu majoritarianism as, as, as critics see? Do you see the temple as actually representing the people of the country or the people of the majority faith of this country? Not all of whom may also necessarily be Ram Bucks. No, not, not necessarily. It's not the question of see. We are not seeing Ram as a Hindu god. We are not seeing Ram as belonging only to the Hindus. We are seeing the values for which Ram stands for. And that is and the temple is for that. And why was the temple destroyed? The temple was not destroyed for looting the money in the temple, unlike Somnath Temple. Even Somnath Temple was destroyed. Why? It was an attack on this civilization. Somnath Temple was destroyed because it was attacked as a civilization. There was there was the idea of Bud Shikan. Mm -hmm. Anything that is in idolatry form should be destroyed. 17 times he came back that uh, uh, temple uh, that temple was to be destroyed, and then finally it was destroyed. Why? It was because of certain civilizational clashes. And if you go back in history, many countries have had this. See what happened in uh, 1453. In 1453, uh, the Turks uh, attacked uh, Constantinople and it was taken over. And what happened? The, 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 the one of the biggest and the strongest uh, church mm -hmm. was uh, destroyed and it was converted into a mosque. And it remained as a mosque. It remained as a slap on the face of the Christian society that you have no right to exist. You have no right to practice your religion. You have no right to go into your church. It was only in 1934 mm -hmm. that uh, Kemal Pasha came and restored that situation, but he did not convert it into a church once again, but he just declared that it is a, uh, it converted into a museum. But given... After but given the fact, I, I take being... your point, sir, given the fact though, uh, Mr. Chari, and you come from Mumbai, given the fact that the, uh, that the temple is being built on the very land where the Babri Masjid once existed, which was demolished in 1992, and riots then followed, do you believe that this, there should be some element of atonement as well? Or do you believe this is only a moment for triumphalism, not for any atonement? Atonement for what? For the destruction that led to hundreds of people dying in riot, should we not even refer to that today? Or do you believe this should be a celebration but that is all in the past? We should look to the future. Rajdeep, those who were responsible for the riots, those who opposed the destruction, those who are against Ram Mandir, mm -hmm. those, who are, those who even today uphold the destruction of a temple in this country, mm -hmm. they are the people who should atone. It is they who should say sorry. It is they who should have said in 1947 and 1950 that there have been mistakes. Are they still referring themselves? Are they feel, are, are they linking themselves with Babar? Mm -hmm. Are they the descendants of Babar or they are descendants of Ram? Who are they? There was a one prime minister, VP Singh, who went to Ayodhya and said, Yaha masjid hai hi kaha? You think such people should atone? Who should atone? Those who destroyed the temple, they should atone. They are not there. And we don't think, and at least personally, I think the Muslims should come out and say mm -hmm. that they are not the descendants of Babar. You know, they, they are part and parcel of this civilization, the same civilization to which you belong, your forefathers belong, the civilization to which me, I belong and my forefathers belong. It is the same civilization of which they are part of it. You know, I, as today... So, you know, he said, no, you the prime Mishra Roma sab mit gaye jahaan se baaki magar hai ab tak namo nisha hamara kuch baat hai ki hasti mitti nahi hamari Why did he say that? Is hasti mitti namari. What is that hasti? That hasti doesn't belong to the Muslims in this country? That hasti doesn't belong to the Christians in this country? That hasti doesn't belong to you and me? Can it I? is the same hasti. It is the same civilizational ethos. 
and they it is it is it is beyond religion it is beyond tradition it is beyond worship it is beyond idols it is that it is, is what they should think about okay so you are you are you are looking you are looking at rs at... has to atone okay i can i ask you though uh, uh, mr sachadri chari today there was much talk of not just that this is a ram moment or a or a civilizational moment is also a moment where india now will look forward to ram rajya that's what mohan bhagwat the rss chief also spoke about now writing in hind swaraj in 1925 at 29 mahatma gandhi says by ram rajya i do not mean hindu raj i mean by ram rajya divine raj kingdom of god for me ram and rahim are one and the same deity i acknowledge no other god but the one god of truth and righteousness how does that fit in with how the rss sees today as a moment of ram rajya correct ram rajya is dharma rajya ram rajya is very much a dharma rajya and what mahatma gandhi has said as far as ram rajya is concerned his concept of ram rajya was of course this i do agree with it ram rajya is that and ram and rahim are one for me but those who follow rahim are they prepared to accept that ram and rahim are one i am prepared to accept rajdeep i am prepared to accept i don't have any problem going to the mosque, mosque and offering prayer for five times a day mm -hmm. but will that man who who says he is follower of rahim mm -hmm. can he enter ayodhya with the same kind of faith in this civilization no, but you seem to be reflecting and, some kind of a hindu victimhood you seem to be suggesting that for centuries hindus were victimized i'm rajdeep this ishwar allah tere naam ram rahim and all is good mm -hmm. for hindus for those who are already secular for those who know what the faith is but everybody has to accept this ram uh, rajdeep everybody has to accept it ram and rahim can exist as long as ram and rahim are equals mm -hmm. if the moment the rahim thinks that i am more equal than ram that i have the first right everything because i am a minority because i am a religious minority mm -hmm. and i don't accept even one word of what you say in your books but that I, is wrong rajdeep that is wrong but have that we, was not the concept of mahatma gandhi okay but have we seen uh, mr chari the rise of the political hindu as opposed to some would say the hindu truly who sees ram from the from the point of view of faith is it about faith at the moment i come back to it is it at the end of the day about an assertion somewhere of political dominance no it is awareness it's it is not political hindu it is aware hindu hindu awareness is there mm -hmm. and hindu assertiveness is there so from slowly from awareness it goes to assertiveness and when this assertiveness comes there is a feeling among the hindus and uh, what we i mean what you call the uh, you can say uh, he feels the hindu feels that uh, he carries the burden of the past on his shoulders and this burden has to be removed what we call the cognitive dissonance this cognitive dissonance has to be removed by the governments mm -hmm. now what happened in this case ram janmabhoomi krishna janmabhoomi even even uh, if you take the case of uh, um this uh, uh, banaras mm -hmm. uh, varanasi there is a masjid standing right behind the temple and there is a case going on and you tell the hindus that there was no temple here you tell the hindus that ram did not exist at all and for centuries the hindus have been believing in ram and this 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 cognitive dissonance has to be removed by some government or the other the congress government could have done it My, who prevented the congress government from doing it my my fi my, fi no my final my final my question not. my final question then to you is constitutional secularism as we understood it over now that you are saying you are because of uh, of failings or of the past or mistakes of the past this is a correction a course correction that india is going through many will say this is trying to create a new republic in a way which starts on january 22nd 2024 a more hindutva republic an assertion as you called it of hindu pride in a way after decades is that how i should see it and the burial of constitutional or nehruvian secularism no there is there is nothing called nehruvian secularism constitution does not say or define the word secularism at all it was only in 1975 that the word secularism was introduced in the constitution mm -hmm. in the first place 
that means from 1950 to 1975 we were not secular the constitution was not secular secularism is the country becomes secular only when the constitution says we are secular Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, who was party to the constitution in 1950, was not secular person or what? Raman or Lohia was not secular. Lal Krishna Advani was not secular. Who was not secular in 1950 till 1975? Mrs. Indira Gandhi, who was born before 1975, was also secular. The word secularism has been misunderstood in this country. Secularism is not keeping away from religion. Secularism is treating all kinds of faith in the same manner and government not dictating what it is. They, they, India okay. has never had a theocracy in thousands of years. In thousands of years, we have never had a theocracy. So how will... Not having theocracy is secularism. So how will today change, in your view, India's polity, if at all? How will it change at all? Because the fact is there are other serious challenges this country faces... Uh, 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 Mr. Chari and many will say that uh, those challenges will be forgotten because people are being driven by the emotional energy being put into this Ram Mandir. Jobs, inflation, unemployment, these are the real issues of our times, agrarian distress. Should we be fo focusing on those or in, as you're calling it the emotional energy now of Hindu assertion? No, this emotional energy if it has two parts. Number one, it is a domestic energy which will now be channelized for constructive purposes, for false positive purposes and everything else. But at the same time, don't remember this, this today, if you see the celebration, it was not just India which celebrated. And entire Hindu world celebrated it. Hindus in America, Canada, Bali, Trinidad, Tobago, and so many countries, they celebrated this. Are they part of India? No. Civilizationally, they have some linkages with India. Therefore, if you look at all these things, the, the stature of India and India's foreign policy based on soft power diplomacy also will change. And that is the strength of India. India has never used its hard power, mm -hmm. except probably for two occasions. Once was it was in, in, in the case of Sri Lanka. LTT thing and all that. And another was as far as 1971, Bangladesh was concerned. And, and, and remember, in both the cases, it was not a BJP government at the center. It was a Congress government at the center. Mm -hmm. But then, that was the strong power which was used, hard power which was used. Otherwise, India is known for soft power. And Ram Janmabhumi Temple, Ram Temple and in Ayodhya, represents the soft power project of India. Okay. And let me tell you, India's... India's significance and India's recognition as a serious country will go up multiple times from now onwards. Just mark my words. Okay. We will mark your words, uh, Mr. Chari. It's uh, good to have you uh, speaking on this issue. You've been very silent on it so far. But as you said, today is a very important day, uh, particularly for those uh, within the Sangh Parivar and dare I say the wider Hindutva Parivar. I, 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 I waited for this day and I, I, I waited for you to invite me, Rajdeep. Yes, you waited, <laughs> but you waited for this day presumably from the 1980s when uh, this movement first started off. So you've been involved right from the very start. Did you ever think this day would come? I, I, I did Kar Seva twice, 1990, Did you ever think, did you ever think this day would come? Did you ever really think you would Absolutely. see the Ram Mandir? I was 100% sure this day will come. Not only that, I am 100% sure some more days are yet to come. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Mr. Seshadri Chari, I appreciate you joining me on the news today. Thank you so much.